Welcome, everybody, to week three of NFL Prime Time. Chris Berman along with Booger McFarland. Hey, we made it to the fall. It's now fall. We're, we're, wait, <laughs> well, we're still dressed summer-like, but you know what? It's the late September. We really should be back at school and show some of the teams. So kind of a symmetrical start. 11 2 and O's, 11 0 and 2s. Miami won the other night. So and some of the games between these teams were eye opening, to say mm. the least. You want to go up north? I tell you what. We're going to go with the Raiders and the Patriots at the not yet frozen tundra of friendly Foxborough. Now, why would I bring up frozen tundra of Foxborough? Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because John Gruden, Raiders, Bill Belichick, Patriots. Last time they faced off Raiders versus Patriots, yes, it was 2001. This stadium wasn't even there. That was the old Schaefer Stadium. The tuck rule, we all learned about it. It's no longer a rule. Don't tell that to Coach Gruden. The greatest kick in NFL history, tied up by Vinatieri. They won it. Patriots won the Super Bowl. They've not played Raiders Patriots since then. So what happened in this one? Naturally, where's the tuck rule? Chase Winovich knocks the ball out and... They, you know, the Raiders wish they had the tuck rule. Really nice job by Chase Winovich. Dipping, coming inside, reaching for the ball. You knock the ball out, is just as good as a sack. All right, so Cam Newton. Last time they threw against Seattle a lot of yards. This is Demir Bird, gain of, of 23. Then, the little dump to Rex Burkhead. Now watch this. What? <laughs> you remember John Elway in the Super Bowl? That's the Whirly Bird. Without a doubt, Jonathan Abram, the heat-seeking missile safety from Las Vegas, comes up, misses the tackle. He's great at tackling, but he missed that one, Boom. Well, Burgett had a big day, and he, yes, he does not have a fear of flying. It's 13 to 3, Patriots. Carr, this fellow's dependable. Hunter Renfro, throw and catch, huh? Nice. And ruled a touchdown first. He was down. Without a doubt, really nice throw, though. Dropping in the bucket by Derek Carr. But no problem, Carr to Foster Mill. Magnifique. <laughs> hey, Mark Davis is magnifique. It's 13 to 10. The lead is down to three for New England. Sony Trinitron Michelle. This time the Patriots ran. Last week they threw the ball a lot against Sony Michelle. 38 yards. He only carried it nine times, but he went for 117. Rex Burkhead, this is the mini copter. Kind of a little bit of a fly. Great job by the Patriots offensive line all day. They controlled the line of scrimmage against Las Vegas. They did. It's 20 to 10 now. Cam, well, you know he can do this. And look at the big fella. I mean, it's like look out and then safe at second base. This is Cam Newton a la 2015 when he was the MVP. The entire league is scared when they see this. Well, I did at for certainly good read. Bigger than you were when you played, right? <laughs> so Cam is safe. Then you know what? Two if by air, one if by submarine. That's Burkhead submarining in. He goes high, he goes low. It's 29-13, and then Patriots defense. Carr, uh-oh, not only is it sack, it's a fumble! Dietrich Wise falls on, and the Patriots win 36-20. So New England and the previous unbeaten Raiders are both 2-1. and one. New England ran for 250 in this game. And Las Vegas were without two of their starting offensive linemen, Trent Brown and Richie Incognito, and it showed. Well, and Cam Newton hasn't taken him long to understand. Yes. Mm. So this is the Patriot way. That aura can sometimes be like, mm. you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just the Patriot way to a degree from the outside looking in, but from the inside looking out, man, these guys are really you know, the, 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 they really enjoy the process as well as myself and me being a member. I'm just lucky to be here. And, you know, anytime I can, you know, lighten the mood in some way, shape, form, you know, I hesitate not. The 2020 Patriot way with the chapeau. Now, two <laughs> undefeated Rams, Bills, Josh Allen, Jared Goff. What a show this was in Western New York. Early on, a laugher. What do the good teams do late in the first half? They not only have the ball, they score. That's Josh Allen to Tyler Croft for a touchdown, 21-3 at the half. Not really sure what Jalen Ramsey was doing right there, but Stephon Diggs ran a nice route, really good throw, even better route by Stephon Diggs. Well, I was, I was looking for another play. I didn't get it. You're going to have to trust me. The Bills were up 28-3. Then, this was interesting. John Johnson rips it out of Croft's hands. He had a couple of touchdowns, and they call it, well, Ty not going to the, to the uh, runner. I thought Ty went to the runner. Just then, Johnson did a nice job on the way down securing the football. So, it was 28-3. to 3. 
One time Buffalo Bill, Robert Woods, a touchdown. Now it's 28-10, now it's 28-17. So Buffalo had their way for two and a half quarters, and I mean had their way. Now Goff, Rams, heating up. Completed a third and 11, third and eight, Goff, Woods, another third down conversion. Rams, red zone, Goff. Uh-oh. Mm -mm. Now, now this is this is here we go with Woods, so we didn't take the other play out either. Okay. Needless to say, I watched this game. Now you're gonna watch it with me. Who knows what's coming next? Golf. That's Cooper Cup. Okay. Two-point conversion, 28 to 25. Really nice route by Cooper Cup beating to Davis White. Midway through the fourth. Uh-oh, Josh Allen. How about Aaron Donald on this play? What more could you possibly do? Other than Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Donald is the best football player in the National Football League. Watch him beat the guard and watch him just ragdoll a 240-pound quarterback. Aaron Donald could be the MVP, baby. Well, so now, turnover. So this was 28-3 and a laugher. And now all of a sudden, when the Rams, Daryl Henderson Jr. in the end zone, they're up 32 to 28. They were down 25 points, under three and a half to go. What can Josh Allen do to get them going? How about third and 22? To Cole Beasley, third and 22, and it's a first down. Wow. A few minutes later, fourth and nine. Pass interference, close. Darius uh, Williams, the ball was in. What do you think? Yeah, by the letter of the law, I understand the flag, but both guys are pushing each other. This is a ticky-tack call, and it ultimately decided this game. Well, it did because Allen, with seconds to go, to Croft for the second time in the game, and the Bills up 28-3, so the Rams come all the way back to take the lead. But in the end, it was Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills, 3-0 again. They did it in 91 and 92 back-to-back -back years. That's a long time ago. Those are Super Bowl years. Again, Josh Allen threw for over 300 yards in this game. Goff threw for over 300 yards in this game. 850 yards of offense in this game. And afterwards, man, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Oh, well, I'm going to need a nice bath tomorrow. Uh, that's a really good Rams defense that we just played. They got after us um, there in the third and fourth quarter. You know, going up 28 to three um, as a team, we got to be better. We got to make sure that we're keeping our foot on the pedal, and we got to put that game away. Um, you know, I'm very happy with how resilient this team was, but I'm also a little little mad um, at myself for allowing us to kind of dip right there, and not um, you know executing like we should have. I put the ball in harm's way too often. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we got a victory, and that, that's all I care about. You know, that was that was wild. We we couldn't really show you enough. We should have, but it was. For the Bills for two and a half quarters, and we saw this. Now, admittedly, they played Jets in Miami before. Right, Rams, right. give them credit, man. They that impressed me that they were that far down and were under control. Buffalo is there's a long leash, and understandably so. And they are trusting Josh Allen to run plays and throw balls. He reminds me of first year starter, second year pro a little bit. Brett Favre mm. and Green Bay were yes. Uh, oh no. Uh, yes. <laughs> It almost got him in trouble, except he pulled him out at the end. Without a doubt. And, and the Buffalo Bills and the Rams, both are really good football teams. And so we saw some good football play. But if you're the Bills, when you get a lead like that, you have to understand how to take the ball out of your quarterback's hands. Don't call a double move on third and three. Mm -hmm. Kind of take some of the air. Psst, psst. Just take some of the air out of the yep. football and slowly win the game. They allowed the Rams to get back into the game. Now, to the Rams' credit, when that run game got going and the play action for Jared Goff started working, you can see the explosiveness of the Rams' offense. Two good football teams. Buffalo just happened to make the fewest mistakes today. You know, and the Rams would rather run it. They're kind of changing a little yes. bit what we've seen, but they ha they can still do that yes. against yes. a good defense. Yes. Buffalo, I'm telling you, this is this is exciting for the Bills because Josh will grow. There are going to be some bumps, but what he's thrown for, what, 1,100 yards right. or whatever it is in three, it's just there are times at 28-10 or whatever, I don't mean run it, run it, run it, punt it, but maybe make a first down and the next thing you know there's six minutes left there's six minutes gone and we're down to 10 minutes let's game. stop trying to go for the home run and throw for 60 when we're up when we're up 23. very well said <laughs> well the vikings need a home run because uh, these are one of these teams that um except that the Bengals are playing the eagles now this has been a fun one hadn't it carson wentz 
0-2. Joe Burrow, 0-2. Something's got to give, <laughs> maybe, right? Burrow. T. Higgins. The Joe's look good, hasn't he? For a rookie, I, I think he's played well. Some good, some bad. That's what you expect from a rookie quarterback. Bengals up 17-16. Carson Wentz on third and seven. Uh-oh. That's a bad pick. LaShawn Sims, Bengals. Just another ill-advised. If you're Carson Wentz and you're throwing this to Zach Ertz, this ball has got to be outside. He throwed it inside. Another <laughs> ill-advised pick from Carson Wentz. So it's 23-16. Philadelphia trailing Cincinnati. Eagles playoff team a year ago. Wentz to John Hightower, 11 yards of first down all along the Hightower. Third and three, under a minute to go. Wentz to Greg Warden. That's a first down Philly. Doug Peterson says, you know, I don't know about a Philly special. How about a Wentz special? Wentz? Uh oh, nobody open. I can run, I can dive, and I can score, and we're tied at 23. Carson Wentz sees this man to man. The defender's back is turned to him. He takes off running. Nice job using his athleticism to make a play. And so, there it is. We go to overtime. Bengals win toss. Then they punt. Then Philly. Now we're already three and a half to go. These teams play the tie in 08 at Cincy. Wentz, a first down. But there's a flag that's be holding on Nate Herbig. And it was a good holding call. If, if you can see, just a, a, a terrible decision by the guard right there. You can't pull the guy down. Good call by the ref. Hurt the Eagles in that situation. Third and 19 Philly, 48-yard line. Wentz looking for Miles Sanders. It's a couple of miles high. <laughs> so the Bengals, now what can they do? Third and 16 from their 14 of Fletcher Cox. They can do that. They can rush the passer. Very good defensive tackle. Other than Aaron Donald, I think he's the second best in the league. Well, the Eagles have one more chance at 20 seconds to go. I remember after the, the last quarter, we, we are tied. Went for Ward, pass broken up. Jake Elliott, 59-yarder. He can do it. However, he can't do it if you make a penalty for five yards. Great job by the Bengals special teams. They shifted and caused a false start. So false start. The Eagles punt with Seconds to go, mm. and mm. well, there was nobody in the stand, so we couldn't hear the Philly boo. And then the Bengals, there's no way you're going to score. You're going to try it, but they couldn't from their own ten. And guess what? 23, 23, <laughs> a very rare tie. Neither team goes 0 and 3, but neither team gets off this night. And I hate to say it because you're LSU. <laughs> Joe Burrow's result better than your alma mater's this <laughs> week. Hey, hey, hey. Joe was all right, and the Eagles had a lot to work on. Very questionable decision right there. Playing for the tie when you're 0 2 and you're Doug Peterson. He's going to get a lot of flack, especially from Philly Radio this week, and deservedly so. You got to play for the win there. So, team that's been playing for the win, 2 0 Tennessee. This is what we were talking about. Minnesota, playoff team like Philly. They look lost. 0 2, two defensive stalwarts on the coaching sidelines. Mike Vrabel, Mike Zimmer. Dalvin Cook. Boy, this is a game for the runners. Look at Dalvin Cook. Whoop, 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 whoop. And he is through in a hurry. Look, who knows what Dalvin is cooking. 39 yards. Poor angle by the safety. Cook made him miss, and the rest was I'll holla, touchdown. Now, Kirk Cousins rolling right. Oh, what a feeling. Adams dancing on the feeling. 16 yards, 13-6 Vikings. Badly in need of a win. Third quarter, third and one Vikings. Look at this. Whoa. Dalvin Cook puts the after. Wait a minute. That's <laughs> did like Sam Lockford. Did, did he come from out of bounds? Was that Woody Hayes? <laughs> wow. He's dodging the guys on the field. He's, he dodged the guy off the field. Now, Cousins to Justin Jefferson. You think he's finally having fun? Look at Justin Jefferson into the end zone. And the Jefferson's there. Moving on up. They finally fi figured out no Stefan Diggs. We may as well use our first round pick. Well, 24 to 12. But here comes Tennessee, down 12. Ryan Tenniel, Corey Davis. Makes a man miss. Davis for the 38 yard gain inside the 10. Third and goal. You know who's getting it. One yard, Derrick Henry. Now it's 24 to 19. Tannehill, play action. Khalif Raymond. See, you think he's open? That's 61 yards, and they're in business. Really good read by Tannehill. Open field safety was gone. Nice throw. And again, flying through the air with the greatest of ease is Henry. They missed the two-point conversion, but they lead by one, 25-24. Vikings now down to the three. Cousins 
Watch this. Kyle Rudolph, usually we wait till the Christmas holidays, but guess what? The lights were on for Rudolph. Rudolph defeating Father Time. A little toe drag swag. Nice catch there, Kyle Rudolph. Wow, that's awesome. It, Vikings failed a two point conversion. It's 30 to 25. Then Tannehill under pressure overthrows Adam Humphreys. So Stephen Kostowski kicked a 51. He's kicked a 54. He actually has kicked three other field goals. And now from 55. Remember that Monday night? He does it. That's how he made six field goals like that. He's great on Sunday. Just don't call him on Monday, boy. Well, that, that must be it. Nah, he's, pretty, <laughs> he's pretty darn good. Now, Vikings, last chance. But oh, it's a fourth and 24. Thielen oh, between my. three almost gets it. But guess what? It's 0-3 Vikings. 3-0 and the Titans. First time they've done that since the Jeff Fisher days in 2008. Minnesota 0-3 for the first time since 2013, despite 181 for Cook. And uh, what can you say? Kostowski, like you said, Sunday, automatic. Tough loss when Cooks rushes for that many yards. The passing game is working. You hate to see a Minnesota team lose that way. Well, they lose it. The Falcons, can they? Well, we know what happened against Dallas, right? So can't happen again. I mean, I no, not again. Can't. It just can't. It just can't. Yeah. And Chicago's 2-0. And they get a break because Julio's on the, not at the schoolyard, he's on the sidelines. Todd Gurley, Atlanta, 10 year, 23 to 10. They've got a big lead. What could happen? I'll tell you what could happen. Mitch Trubisky picked off by Bleedy Ray Wilson. Down to the 19, leads to a field goal 26 10. And then Matt Nagy said, you know what, Mitch, why don't you take a seat? Let's see if Nick Foles can do this. We've seen both of these movies before. Atlanta with the lead, Nick Foles from nowhere. Oh, whoa to Allen Robinson, but it's not a touchdown. Denard picks it off eventually. No, it's not a touchdown. They call it a touchdown on the field. They went back, reviewed it, and as, as you can see, the, both are going down. The defender gets the ball, and he's got full possession. Nice reversal from New York. Inter interception for the Falcons. Dark quest, Denard. So it looks like, look, the bear, it's just not going to work. It spiked the great throw and catch. Denard made the play. Now it's still 26-10. Young Way Koo. Koo Koo Kachu, not the Walrus. No good from 48 yards. But so what? It's 26-10. I mean, come on. Nick Foles again. We're going to do this. We've already seen Rudolph in September. Come on. What do you think? This is a fairy tale. Well, wait a minute. That's Ted Ginn Jr., 29 yards, and the Bears convert on fourth. Jimmy Graham, that's what they got him for. Still 26-16. Very decisive back shoulder throw there to one of their 12 tight ends they have on the roster. Four, four and a half to go. Bears. Who falls to Robinson? Cuckoo Kachu in the end zone. Touchdown, 37 yards, 26-23. 4.15 to go. Matt Ryan. Olamde Zacchaeus. Mm. Incomplete. Mm. Three and out. Falcon. No, this it's not happening, is it? Mm -mm. No. Third and eight, full. Oh my goodness. It might be happening. Anthony Miller, touchdown. 30 to 26 Bears. Pressure in his face, delivered a dime. But come on, if this can't stay this way, can't. Yeah, well maybe it does. Deshaun Gibson Sr. puts it away. Nick Foles off the bench. Atlanta. The first team in the same season to have a 15 or more point lead in the fourth quarter twice and lose the games. We're still in September, and we don't mean to rub salt in wounds, but Atlanta 0-3. Chicago goes to 3-0 after Nick Foles. He really almost had four touchdowns, yeah. if you saw the highlights. Afterwards, Coach Nagy on the move. When things are, are not going well, you get all the blame when you probably shouldn't. But at the same point in time, that comes with the job. And, uh, and uh, you know, we, we discussed it. Really, when that interception occurred, I think you just kind of felt like, okay, we got to make a move here. The situation sucked, but it was just the flow of the game, how it was happening. Coach made a decision that he felt was best for the team. And I'm really happy for this team. I mean, they, they battled back, and uh, it was awesome to get a W. I'm excited to go to work. I don't know what the situation is or whatever, but I was really grateful for how we handled it today. He's a team guy, and he showed that leadership today. Well, look, when we were watching, I, I, I didn't know that the Bears would come from all the way back. Not that we didn't think Nick Foles could. Right. I thought it was, I'm dating myself here. 
Don Strock for Shula. Not going well. You play a whole half. Let's see how we go. But Trubisky, you're going to start next week. We don't know. It's only Sunday night. But Nick Foles has done this before, and he looked like he knew exactly what he was doing. Well, and, and it looks like Matt Nagy wants him to do that. Think about this, Boom. They're 2-0. and Your quarterback, who you drafted number two overall, throws a pick while you're 2-0. and And you pull him. That tells me they wanted to replace him anyway. And the only mm. the reason he was mm. a starting quarterback was because of his draft spot. And the first chance that Matt Nagy got, he pulled him. But you saw this team. There was a spark. And this team came back and won. There's no way he can put Mitch Trubisky back in that lineup. If he does, he might be at risk of losing his team. Well, I mean, and if that's – Coach Nagy knows his quarterback. Exactly. That's his best yes. background. Yes. Bulls look comfortable. And Atlanta, I – Again, I don't, I, I, I don't know that I could say that we saw a couple of overthrows and stuff. I can't say take the air out of it, but I I mean, I guess once it, it's the snowball effect, right? Like, you, they can't stop it. It's painful to watch. And it's starting to get in their head now. Yes. If you go back to the Super Bowl now twice this year, Dallas and now today, it's starting to get in their head. And as a player, as the game goes on, and it's like, no, it's not happening. Oh, it's happening. It's not happening. Here we go again. It starts to play on your mind. They got to figure out, you can't lose the football game, okay? The more games in this league are lost than won. They just got to stop making the losing plays. Don't turn it over. Keeping the football on third down and moving the chains on the offense. Well, so Atlanta, the head scratcher, Chicago. The Chicago Bears are 3-0. and All right, now, Washington and Cleveland. Sunday in Cleveland, this is, well, this is... A first, Callie Brownson, Browns coach, Jennifer King, Washington football team coach, Sarah Thomas, official. What a great day. What a great moment. And not a great throw. That was Dwayne Haskins Jr. picked up by Carl Joseph. And so here comes Cleveland into Washington. But get that it's a, oh, it's a fumble. <laughs> You're, but the Browns get it, and they're inside the 30. Nick Chubb, boy, he runs hard, huh, Booger? One of the more underrated running backs in football. Not only can he run and run hard, he can catch it out of the backfield. People are sleeping on Nick Chubb. Haskins going to be picked off, though, by Malcolm Smith. So you figured back in the Buckeye State, he do, uh, it didn't really no. wear on him, right? Brown's ball inside the 25. Mayfield a little short. Kareem Hunt. Yeah, they got pair of backs that can really do the job. If you're going to run it with Chubb, you can split Hunt out. Nice one-two combo in Cleveland. Now, but you know what? Washington, usually they don't get started till they're way behind. Haskins, that was Antonio Gibson. Dontrell Inman caught a pair from that from Haskins. Washington's ahead 20-17. to 17. Spunky for Coach Rivera. Some good stuff, some bad stuff from Haskins. Chubb. Well, he just gets ahead of steam. He's knocked out at the 18-yard line. First down, Cleveland. Then Baker Mayfield. Deep in the red zone. Feels it. Scrambles it and throws it to Harrison Bryant. Browns lead 24 to 20. Washington trying. But third pick. B.J. Goodson, that one. Yeah, four turnovers, Haskin. That's not going to win it. The Browns next drive. Can they salt it? Chubb. Big fellas out in front of him. He does the rest. Really good block by the pulling guard, number 77, leading him in there, and Chubb does the rest. And Ron Rivera said it the best. Haskins has to learn on the job. He can't throw three picks, but I can't pull him because the only way he can learn is if we keep putting him out there. And so the Browns, first time at any time in the season, over 500 for <laughs> six years, 24. Been a while. Nowhere to go but up. Cleveland wins it by the score of 34 to 20. Chubb had 108 yards. So the 49ers played at the Jets, clobbered them, got almost the whole team hurt on the field. They went to West Virginia for the week. Maybe the ghost of John Denver was singing Country Roads. Whatever it was, the Niners say, all right, we're back in New York and we like it. This play, Evan Ingram, the pitch, nah, Niners recovered. All week long, what play can we come up with? Let's throw a reverse to the tight end. Didn't mm. work. This is a nice story with people hurt. Jarek McKinnon, himself hurt, two years ACL. 
The fact that on this day, he was the main back, 12 yards. Without a doubt, and Kyle Juszczyk, the fullback, the highest paid fullback in the game, did a great job of blocking for him. But you're right, great to see McKinnon back healthy and running behind this great offensive line. And in the end zone for a touchdown, 13-6 to Niners. Now 16-9, number one pick, Brandon Ayuk. Oh, this looks like Kyle Shanahan, doesn't it? This is a play. Last year it was Debo Samuel. This year it's Brandon Ayuk. And 23 to 9. Nick Mullins played quarterback for the injured Jimmy Garoppolo. He's good. And Jeff Wilson was a guy in the end zone twice in the fourth quarter. And the Giants, mm, mm. well, let's see. So the 49ers play two games at the Meadowlands. Yes. They win this one 36 9. They. Beat the Giants and the Jets combined to 67 to 22 in New York. They're 2 and 0 in San Francisco. They're 0 and 1. Is there anyone else we can play in this stadium while we're here? Because we can pile up a, a heck of a record. They play one with the A team today with their B team, and they like playing. Other than the turf, they like playing in New York. Well, they do, and so Niners give them credit playing with a uh, depleted roster. Texans. Well, these are the Watt brothers. Yes. Two for the Steelers, as you know, and of course, J.J. Watt, captain Houston in Pittsburgh against T.J. and the brother Derek, but not a captain, played somewhat. Houston 0-2, the roughest schedule in football. Deshaun Watson said, don't cry for us, we're trying. That's Brandon Cook for 20. Watson to Randall Cobb. Hey, 28 yards, Texans lead 7-3. Under two minutes to go in the half. 14-10. Houston, Big Ben, James Washington, they're moving. First down. Next play. During the high holidays, it's Juju Smith Schuster, and I think he was open. There's nothing like watching the Pittsburgh Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger in a two minute drill. He calls his own plays and he orchestrates it so well. The Steelers now at 17 to 10, they lead it. Texans. Cobb for 18, then Watson. You know what? He's just so dangerous. I know how oh, they're losing. He can do all of this. To Jordan Akins at 20 yards. First that, down. That's the problem, Boom. He's got to do all that. They need a running game in Houston. He floats one for Will Fuller. That's nice. Fuller goes up, and the Texans lead 21 17. All right. Maybe this is our day. Texans up 21 20. Watson. Scrambling. Cobb. Nice. Woo! 34 yards. And then Watson. Uh-oh, he didn't mean to check in at the Hilton. <laughs> Nothing against those hotels, but Mike Hilton. Ah, the room was occupied. It doesn't matter who you are. When you're quarterback and you stop and throw across your body as he gets hit by Watt, usually nothing good happens. T.J. Watt, a menace as always. As Big Ben says, okay, give me the turnover, give me Eric Ebron, 14 yards. Big Ben, another team with some tight ends. Vance McDonald has the ball. E-I-E-I-O, <laughs> first down 14-yard game. We, we sing all the nursery rhymes here. James Conner, in. And they're going to go for two because of 26-21. And Big Ben sling to Smith Schuster. It's 28-21. Texas. Guess who says hello to Watson again? T.J. Watt. He just... Between Watt and Dupree, the Pittsburgh Steelers linebackers have dominated. They get more pressure on the quarterback than any team in football, boom. So Pittsburgh is 3-0. Houston. Mm. Well, why don't you play Kansas City, Baltimore, and Pittsburgh to start the season? Rough. So they, they were 0-3 and won a division a couple of years ago. Pittsburgh wins 28-21, and here's a number. TJ has 38 and a half sacks, right? So that's first 50 games. Mm -hmm. he, it's more than his brother had. I, didn't JJ? That, that doesn't sound right. It just does doesn't. It? I just showed you how good he's been, though. Yeah. All right. So well, we got. Uh, well, this will be interesting. We got the Bucks, and we got the Broncos. Tom, these uniforms, I know, Boog, you played for them. <laughs> these, I know it's pewter. I, they're in Denver. I, I know. I don't like them. What? But I like the play. Look at this. Blocked by Pat O'Connor. And here we go in Brady and Tampa, despite the uniforms, are set up in Denver. <laughs> Three plays later, 
after Tampa takes over. Brady, Chris Godwin, in the end zone, 7 nothing Tampa. You can see Godwin taking that Edelman role, working underneath, and Brady look for him today. Second quarter, third and eight, up 10-3. to three. Brady, time, floats. Scotty Miller, back on the good list. Yeah, right. as, long as, as long as you catch it, you'll be on his good side. 46 <laughs> yards, big game, two plays later. But look at this play, all right? So that's, that's why he's on the good list. We got to get Gronk involved, right? Yes. Here he is. Gronk. Oh! Oh. Oh, well. Gronk says he's there to block. No, he's there to catch. Gronk. Mongo want ball. Six yard <laughs> pickup. Inside the five first down. Brady. Bing. Mike Evans. That'll work. 17-3 Tampa. Seen that play before. Brought it from New England with him. Yes, I think so. Now, the quick roll. The throw across. Wow. O.J. Howard caught that between two bucks. They got a lot of tight ends in Tampa. They have to incorporate them more in the game. Not only Gronkowski, Cameron Brake, but that man, O.J. Howard also. Well, five plays later, second and goal. Look at it again. He still caught it. Now, Tom used to run those in from the one. Yay, yay. <laughs> Let me throw it. There's Evans for a one yard. And uh, Tampa up 23 to 3. And if you're the Broncos, I understand Justin Simmons is a good safety, but it's a mismatch all, out, all outdoors when you put him on Mike Evans. And now, Shaq Barrett. Uh oh. Shaq is in the house. Shaq, sack. Driscoll in the end zone. It's a safety. Barrett had a couple of sacks, the former Bronco. And you know what? It's just the day that Driscoll, that's Levante David, it's Tampa was too tough. They were, and Todd Bowles did an outstanding job of pressuring the young quarterbacks from Denver, a lot of blitzes. If this defense is going to play this way and the offense can come along, the Bucks are going to be dangerous come the end of the season, boom. So the Buccaneers, after the opening loss to the Saints, are 2-1. and one. Denver, I mean, Driscoll, he, yeah. yeah, he's the backup. Yeah. And uh, Tampa with a big win for Bruce Arians. And we've started fast in every ball game. We get a lead and we, we have to develop a better finish. I won't say a killer instinct, just a finish. And uh, yeah. uh, we came out, we, we answered when they scored, we scored. But again, way too many penalties offensively, second and first and 20 every series it seemed like. Liked the way we ran the ball and finished it out. But uh, yeah, defensively, uh, we did a heck of a job. Well, good flight home. Jets. Hmm. Speaking of flying, Philip Rivers, Sam Darnold. Do you think very early you got a feel for how this was going to go? Very early. Goodbye. <laughs> I, I, I don't mean to laugh. I mean, Jay, uh, Xavier Rhodes, <laughs> 44 yards, and Colts are off to the race. Cardinal saying, Sam Darnold, you can't be late to the outside against the corners in the NFL. Can't do it. The youngster, Jonathan Taylor. Up the middle, 12 yards. He's going to like the line that he's got here in Indy. Yeah, he's good. And that line is also. And down to the five, Rivers. Mo Alley Cox. Phillip, 400 touchdown passes, 60,000 yards passing. We love him. Young man Rivers. Darnold. Xavier Rhodes, the X-Man again. Fooled him in zone coverage. He thought he could slide it in there, and he couldn't. Colts sensing a romp. And fourth and goal. Why not go for it? It's Taylor again. It's a touchdown. It's 24 to 7. And then uh, we get very late in the third. Darnold now just trying for Chris Hogan. TJ Carey. Carry on my wayward son. He's gone. Yeah, Mama said there would be days like this. I mean, the Jets don't have a lot to play with. He's trying. But the Colts, who were stunned week one for Jacksonville, they come back and slice and dice the Jets 36 six to seven. Colts have a nice formula. They can run the football with Jonathan Taylor and throw the outside with their weapons. As long as Phillip Rivers does not turn the ball over, they will be a really good team. Cowboys, Seahawks. This went deep into the late afternoon in Seattle. <laughs> oh, and Dallas buoyed by that oh. comeback against Atlanta. And who wouldn't be buoyed by the play of Russell Wilson? 
Tyler Lockett. He can fly. He's open. And Russell ain't going to miss it. 43 yards, 73 Seahawks. Blown coverage. And when you allow the best deep ball throw in football to make that throw, it's easy picking. Now watch this. Wilson, second year man is DK Metcalf. He's got it for the tip. No, the punch out. Trayvon Diggs, what a play. And wrap that up. Yeah, DK's trying to hot dog and jog into the end zone. He'll never let that happen again. Unfortunately, it happened today. He's got to live with it. And so touchback. It would really come back to cost the Seahawks, right? Because under a minute to play in the half, Mac Prescott looking for Amari Cooper. Oh, but it's picked off by Shaquille Griffin. Look at Griffin cross the field. He makes the play to the Dallas 34, and the Seahawks in business late in the half. 12 seconds to go in the half. Wilson, time. <laughs> Lock it more open than the last time. Just a blown coverage by the Cowboys. Russell Wilson, that is like, I mean, that's stealing. That's taking candy from a baby boom. 23 to 15, Booger Lock it three touchdowns on the day. Now, first place, second half. Prescott hit by Jaron Reed. Benson Mayowa catches it, takes it all the way back to the Cowboys five. Seahawks punch it in. It's 30 to 15. But Dallas, what? They're worried about a deficit? Prescott. Cedric Wilson, that is nice. 42 yards, going to be a touchdown. It's going to be 30 to 22. Really accurate throw by Dak, allowed the receiver to keep running. Nice score by Wilson. Early fourth quarter, so the one score game, it's eight point deficit. Prescott, Michael Gallup. <laughs> He's galloping into the end zone. 43 yards. Sound effects free on this show. Don't have to pay extra on ESPN Plus. It's 30 to 28. They don't get the two point conversion. Now, Prescott. Ooh. Oh, but out of the hands of Flowers, into the hands of Gallup. What a play. Sometimes the ball's got to bounce your way, boom. And late in this game, it was starting to do that for the Cowboys. And the Cowboys end up with a field goal. They lead 31 to 30. Two and a half to go. Wilson. Greg Olson, speaking of veteran tight ends, 11 yards, first down. Buck 55 in the game. Wilson, time, plenty of it. DK Metcalf in the end zone, 29 yards, touchdown. Great throw, but the lack of pass rush by the Cowboys gave Wilson all day, and for a veteran quarterback, that's entirely too much time. 38-31, but Prescott, they're going to sack him. No, they're not. He's going to fire it. Do they have one more in them? Oh, picked off by Ryan Neal. Boy, the, another high-scoring game. That's what we got. <laughs> and the Seahawks beat the Cowboys 38-31. So in that very, very competitive division of theirs, the NFC West, the Seahawks are 3-0 in Dallas. Again, showing spunk. Tough place to win. I understand the 12th man wasn't there, but... You can't expect to come back all the time. Russell Wilson continues on fire. I mean, Russell Wilson, he's on an MVP level. And the way he's playing, if you look at Lockett and Metcalf, when they can run the football, they can get a little pass rush from that defense. Seattle, especially up there, is going to be tough to beat. But if, if you're Dallas and you have an offensive line that's supposed to be that good, mm -hmm. Zeke can't run for 34 yards on the road in a hostile environment. Now you're putting too much pressure on Dak Prescott, and it was too much today because he's got to force some throws. You want to be balanced on offense, and they weren't today for Dallas. Now, so Seattle, I mean, they're moving. And then, you know what? They go to Miami next week. They will, in the first four games, fly more miles than Baltimore does all year. That's what, mm. that's what happens when you're a West Coast. If you're throwing it in, I mean, it's the way it is. <laughs> Baltimore's like 6,000-something, and this is already going to be bad. Yeah. Frequent <laughs> flyers, the Seahawks. <laughs> Panthers and the Chargers. So you know that Tyrod Taylor is still out. And that a dangerous situation. It's yeah. good to see him on the sidelines. That they say he won't play next week either. So Justin Herbert knew all week he was going to start. Teddy Bridgewater says that's their problem. My job is to score. That's Mike Davis. It's 13 yards, Carolina. Nice play call, Joe Brady, for the Panthers. LSU could have used you on Saturday night. Well, <laughs> on defense, too. 15-7. Herbert's pass. Uh-oh. That's picked up by Dante Jackson. Jackson makes a move. Look at him go past the midfield stripe. He's got a couple of blockers. Going to try to make it into the end zone. Almost does with eight seconds to go in the first half. It sets up field goal. And so it's 18 to 7 Carolina. Good job, Carolina going out west. Could Herbert lead him back? 
Well, you got Keenan Allen. That'll work. Two-point conversion doesn't work. They're down 21-16 between two defenders. Good throw. Very good throw. Giving your guy a chance to make a play, and Allen did. Panthers punting on fourth down under two minutes to go. And what about special teams? Ooh, did they? Hot ugh, potato. Hot potato. They, you get it. I got it. You get it. Oh, the ball goes to the end of They review it. They said that Jansen, J.J. Jansen, had possession at the one. And wow. guess what? Great play, special teams. Chargers have to go 99 mm, yards mm. with the kid, the rookie. He says, I don't care. Herbert, Allen, 25 yards, first down Chargers. Justin Herbert feeling the rush, sliding a little bit. Tries to lateral. No, he tries to lateral to Eckler. Oh, he had him. Good play Look, call. Oh. If he gets it, it's a touchdown. It's a walk off. You got to make the pitch. You got to see it in your hands. Great play call. Bad execution. Eckler, you got to catch that, baby. Oh, my goodness. So, Carolina, give him the nod. Carolina, Matt Golden Rule. First win as head coach. And the Chargers, they fall to one. So, both teams are one and two. And good effort, Carolina. Bridgewater, he. He wins game. Speaking of winning games, how about Kyler Murray? Arizona, 2-0 in that NFC West. Detroit. Huh. Is this going to be the day for Detroit? They've <laughs> lost 11 in a row. They tied out there in the first game last year. Kyler Murray intercepted by Jamie Collins, the one-time Patriot. Yeah, Jamie Collins fooled him. Kyler usually, usually doesn't get fooled. He got fooled several times by the Lions today. Several picks. So... Murray, three interceptions on this day. And that's a nice pitch, Matthew Stafford, to Jesse James. He robs Banks. He scores touchdowns. <laughs> Lions lead 10-7. to seven. Now Murray. What, 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 what? That's the most, ex well, Barry Sanders might have had two-yard runs more exciting. This is close. I mean, if he can do this, and here's the thing I love about it, Boom. He doesn't take the big hits when he runs. Well, he took none there. 13-7, the Cardinals lead. 35 seconds left in the half, and that Stafford to Kenny Galladay. We had Rudolph. We got Galladay. We had Juju Smith-Schuster. It's, it's a festive show. 17-13 Detroit. Murray, third quarter. DeAndre Hopkins. Jeez, 10 more for 137? Somebody should cover him. <laughs> yeah, well, if you can. Mur Andy Isabella, my man from UMass. He's fast. Isabella, second round pick a year ago. I was an assistant coach for a couple of games there. Way to go, Andy. 23 20 card. Stafford, to Marvin Jones Jr. Ah, here they go. First down to the 42. Tie game. Buck nine to go. Stafford, Galladay, gain of 11. 58 seconds to go. 23 all. Ooh, he hits Jones. 20 yards. They're in business in the red zone. Matt Prater. Let us pray. Detroit, they've lost a lot in a row. It is good. <laughs> it's good. Hey, a win is a win is a win. And a great job by Matthew Stafford on that last drive. Nobody runs a two-minute drive like Ben Roethlisberger and Matthew Stafford. The pinpoint accurate passes. Nice job getting the Lions in position to kick a game-winning field goal. Yeah, you want to get off the schneid, and so Arizona loses for the first time this young season and uh, Detroit <sighs> finally a good plane ride home that's interesting and again we're three weeks into the season but usually defense ahead of offense that no lead is safe seemingly booger it will be still a while right until the defenses kind of get back to where they usually are Offense is definitely upper hand. Well, you know, the, back in the day, the offenses were much more simple. Now the offenses are more complex, more spread out. So the lack of practice time leads to miscommunication on defense. You're not getting the checks, and you're seeing guys run wide open more than we've ever seen before. So when the defenses start to practice more and they can get their communication down, you'll start to see them tighten up, and just maybe they'll slow some of these offenses down. Well, it's, it's going to take a while. It certainly is fun. It's like, it's like um, baseball, you know. Is the football juiced? No, it's not. <laughs> but, but my goodness, uh, the offense is fun to watch. And again, no lead is safe. I tell you about fun to watch. So I'm yeah. going to give my game balls 
to two members who we lost of the NFL 100-year anniversary all-time team this past week. Larry Wilson, St. Louis Cardinals safety, 60s. Unbelievable hitter, unbelievable safety, and Gale Sayers. I mean, yeah. there was nobody more exciting. He essentially only played five years. The youngest man ever inducted into the Hall of Fame. 34, he's already in the Hall of Fame. Gale Sayers, Larry Wilson, too. Their families, our condolences, and our thank you from all football fans because nobody, you're on that that team? Yeah. Well, now you're saying something. They were both gentlemen. I was honored to know them both, and um, we miss you. So we miss those guys, and don't ever forget how good they were. Let's go to Scott Van Pelt because we have a good Sunday night game, Green Bay at New Orleans. Scotty? Boomer, thanks. A Sunday nighter from New Orleans featuring a couple guys who will someday be Hall of Famers as well. Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers' team, high scoring. They'd leave Sunday night the highest scoring. And these guys combined average for 69.5 points per game, the highest scoring quarterback matchup in the Super Bowl era. Helps to have guys like this. Alvin Kamara gets loose for a gain of 49. Starts off the game strong. A couple of plays later. So dynamic in the passing game. Comes out. Texas wrap. Stays on his feet. Sneaks the ball across the end zone. The goal line, I should say. And makes it 7 to 3. No Devontae Adams here, but Alan Lazard made one play after another. That's a perfect pass from Aaron Rodgers. 48 yards. And this is such a dangerous part of the game in the NFL right now. Play action. Lazard, touchdown, Rodgers, 8 of 9, 89 yards in a touchdown, off play action. Down there around the goal line, you see Russell Wilson constantly doing it. You see Rodgers doing it. Drew Brees has done it plenty through the years as well. Kamara stays on his feet. They get down there, knocking on the door late. Chance to tie the game? No. Out of timeouts, Brees looks to the end zone and finds Emmanuel Sanders. And the Saints take the lead 17-13. Early third, same score. No play action because it's third and ten, which makes you wonder, how does the Saints secondary allow Lazard to get wide open? He gets caught and tackled inside the five. Saints defense stiffens. The Packers decide to go for it on fourth and one. Aaron Jones takes it in, pack back in front. 27 to 20 to score. Breeze play action, wants to go deep instead, dumps to Kamara, and this will be a decent pickup. Well, that's going to be a really good pickup. Kamara is so patient, setting up downfield blocks, stays on his feet. And remarkably, this play ends up being a touchdown. Kamara gets some help here, some next-gen stats. How about Eric McCoy? Big fella hustling. Max speed over 16 miles an hour. Third fastest max speed by an O-lineman on a scoring play this season. Kamara finished with 197 total yards, two touchdowns, and the best grill in the game. Tied at 27. Early fourth, Saints get the ball back. Gave all that money in the offseason to Taysom Hill. They got a package for him in here. Play gets blown up. Zadarius Smith, spectacular defensive play on the ball. They get the ball, turning it into a field goal. And now, late, nobody's better on free plays than Rodgers. So he knows he's got a free shot at it. They got the encroachment. He throws it to the end zone to Lazard, and they call P.I. Now second and goal again is play action. And he finds Robert Tanyan in the end zone. The Saints, who have the most defensive penalties in the league, cost them again. And they drop Sunday nighter to the Packers at home by seven. The Packers will be seen here on ESPN on Monday night against the Falcons, who, as we know, had that remarkable collapse again. They'll be taking on a Green Bay team that through three games is the highest scoring team in the NFL. And this story franchise, boom, all the great records that they've accomplished through the years, this is the most points they've ever scored through three games. All right, thank you very much. You know, we're here all the time, NFL primetime, mm-hmm. ESPN Plus, $5.99 a month. It's just <laughs> coffee and a donut. It, 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 it really isn't a lot. So hopefully if you're enjoying it for the first time, welcome. We look forward to the next version of NFL primetime. Can't wait, boom. Hey, man, you know what? Rookie of the year. <laughs> Booker McFarland, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching Prime Time.